Hello Transformers fans, Adam here, back for another Transformers review with a missing link, CO1 Optimus Prime, and we'll compare him with his CO2 counterpart here. We'll go ahead and get right into it. Starting with the box, I'll show you this real quick. It's pretty much what we've come to expect from a Takara box. So a graphic of Optimus on the front, some pictures of him in his different modes and some poses. On the back, a demonstration of some of his features, the usual graphic of the Transformers, and then a mini bio for Optimus that's entirely in Japanese, so I can't make that up for the life of me. But it does also come with the old school decoder so that you can check out his power levels. And this being Optimus and all, yeah, he is pretty dang powerful. All right, we'll go ahead and put that back there. And we'll start with Optimus's trailer. So it's G1 Optimus's trailer with a few small differences. The first which is Roller here. He doesn't launch like he used to even though they still have the button on the back here for aesthetics. So the launching is entirely up to you now. And then Roller himself has a new feature. He still has the hole on top here, so you go ahead and put in the Ion Blaster. Give Optimus some fire support. Or take the blaster out. This piece now rotates around. And it's a siren, just like he had on the show. All right, put Roller aside. And then the cockpit here still has launchable missiles. Still has the claw, still has the antenna. The difference here is the cockpit can now detach and then wheel out and becomes a portable battle station, I guess, for Optimus, even though we never actually saw this part on the show. But still, it's a nice cool extra option. All right, we're gonna put that missile back in, reattach this, put roller back in there, and we'll move the trailer aside for now. And we'll focus on Optimus himself. We'll go ahead and give him back his Ion Blaster. So he does come with the old school sticker sheet here. But this is completely unnecessary because now everything is molded and painted on and it looks beautiful. So no need to worry about anything coming loose and peeling off. Give you a full 360 look here. All right, we'll put him down. And let's get the CO2 model back out here for a comparison. We'll start with the accessories. So first, the Ion Blaster. If you notice, this one is all black to make it look like the G1 toy, whereas this one has the silver in here to make it look more like it did in the cartoon. I definitely prefer this one a little bit more. And then the Energon Axe. So this one is a little more transparent than this one. And I don't know, I do actually prefer this one a little bit more. All right, we'll go ahead and get these accessories out of their hands. So. Okay, the accessories are put away, so now it's just the Optimai here. Now let's go ahead and have ourselves a Prime off. So this CO1 model, this is designed to make him look more like the G1 toy, as opposed to a CO2 counterpart that makes him look more like the G1 cartoon. So the red, the blue, they are noticeably darker with the CO1 model. And the faces, the CO1 model has the G1 toy yellow eyes, as opposed to this one that has the G1 cartoon blue eyes. And as far as that goes, I do prefer the blue eyes here because, I don't know, is it just me or do these yellow eyes make him look a little evil? <laughs> and the CO1 model has the old school sticker patterns as opposed to the CO2 model that doesn't have any of that. And if you notice, the CO1 model has the two Autobot symbols as opposed to the CO2 that only has the one. Again, more cartoon accurate. And then there are the tips at her feet here. So this one has more of the taillight pattern that look much better when he's in truck mode. This one is just grayish silver that look much better when he's in bot mode. But when he's in truck mode, admittedly, it does look a little awkward. And then the windshields. This one has more yellowish tint to them. I suppose this one has more of a blue tint. Again, toy accurate, cartoon accurate. And finally, we'll go ahead and tilt their heads back and bring down their windshields. And they both have the matrix of leadership so they can both light our darkest hour. The difference is, this one is more gold with a chrome background, as opposed to the CO2 counterpart here that's more silver with a black background. And if you don't like how it looks in there, then this whole piece can come out, and you can just have it as the seats for a more classic G1 look. All right, let's go ahead and close you up. Set you back there. We'll go ahead and move you aside, and we'll focus on your articulation. It's the exact same as the CO2 model, so the head has a 360 action. His shoulders, 360, and he can move them up and up even further with these double hinges. His elbows, twist them around and move them up and down 
and I love the sound of these ratchet joints. His hands open and close and twist them around. You could twist his hips a little bit, not a whole lot, but a lot more than you could do with the G1 toy. His legs, move him back, move him forward. His thighs, twist them around, bend his knees. And his feet, bring him down, bring him up, and twist them around. Definitely a huge upgrade from the G1 toy. Beyond happy to have him in my collection. Now let's go ahead and transform him. Start by flipping his head back. And then bring down his feet. Turn him around here. Go ahead and get these wheels out of your way. And his hips. We're going to go ahead and clip them together. Make sure everything is nice and centered. Yeah, just like that. Now bring the legs up and set them on our little rests here. And go ahead and clip the legs together. There we go. Go ahead and move these wheels back into place. And then swing the arms back. His hands, go ahead and move them in. And then swing the forearms in, just like that. And there he is as a Mack truck. And let's get his trailer back out here. So go ahead and bring down the claw, tuck that underneath, bring down the antenna, go ahead and bring down the whole cockpit, and then close up the sides. And we'll clip them together. Uh, cute. Or maybe there we go now it's clipped together close up the door bring in the stabilizers and attach them to Optimus here and now he is ready to roll out <laughs> I can never resist doing my very bad Peter Collin impersonation <laughs> all right we're going to put the trailer aside again and let's get the CO2 model back out here for a little truck comparison so again, you can see that the red and the blue, they are noticeably darker with the CO1 model here. And the CO2 has the yellow parts for his bumper. Again, more cartoon accurate. As opposed to this, that's just straight chrome. And twist them around. And you can see what I was talking about with the tips of his feet. This was much more passable when he was in bot mode. But as a truck, this looks a little awkward. As opposed to this, that looks more like actual taillights. So they both have their pros and their cons. So overall, after playing with both of them, I would say that if you already have a G1 Optimus with a trailer, then I would go ahead and get the CO2 model because it is more cartoon accurate. And you've heard me say in my videos plenty of times how much I prefer cartoon accuracy. But if you don't already have a G1 Optimus, then the CO1 model would be the one for you. It's like having G1 Optimus with incredible upgrades. That's my two cents. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. But That'll wrap it up for this video. Join me for my next one. Until then, take care, Transformers fans.